Okay, we come to Matthew chapter 5, and we're going through the Beatitudes, right? And we're learning that one of the main complaints about Jesus is that the Pharisees are saying he's breaking the law of Moses, and he's teaching contrary to that, right? And Jesus corrects him and says, nope. God's word, one crossing of the T, one dotting of the I, will not pass a whole earth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word won't, right? And so that isn't enough, though. He's got to address, really, his relationship to the Father and the law and the right perspective there. Because the Pharisees had such a, a skewed perspective that God blesses and rewards and honors and allows people to go into the kingdom because they're the perfect child, right? They, they obey all the law, and that wasn't the purpose of the law. And it's causing this conflict and this, this problem with the relationship with the people and the leaders and the people and God. So Jesus wants to give them the right perspective and kind of bring everything back down to earth, so to speak. Here's what God really means in his word and through the law and not what these guys are saying. And so we're going to get into that right after this. So Jesus is talking about the outlook of the law and, and God's view on the law and how, and how people are held righteous by it, right? And so he, he says this, Matthew 5, 19 through 20, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus is bringing up this idea of this artificial righteousness, this self-made, man-made righteousness, that even though they say they're following the law, and and mainly they were, but the problem was is the way they interpreted it, the way they used it, the way they found loopholes and got around it. Jesus is saying, look, I want you to understand this. These guys are not the standard. God is the standard, right? And these guys misinterpret the law. But here's what he says. It, He's not saying that directly, right? What he's saying is, if anyone breaks, and, and they use the term break, but the, the word means, it can mean more than just break. It means if somebody just loosens it, that, that somebody um, would bend it, that they would uh, weaken the authority of it. That, that means a lot more. Breaking it would be, you know, you think about, well, they teach... Don't commit adultery, yet they commit adultery. Well, that's easy. They, you, I shouldn't follow that guy. But they're saying even if they twist it a little bit, if they bend or break it, if they take away some of the authority, well, that's not exactly what God's Word means. And yeah, I mean, you can do that because that, that's acceptable. It's not going all the way, right, with these guys saying, well, don't commit adultery, but you, if you're looking at a woman lusting... There's nothing wrong with that. Looky but don't touchy, you know, and he, he's addressing that. No, because that's affecting, and we're going to get to that in a little bit, that's going to affect their hearts, right? So the idea here is that if they are doing this, they are bottom of the barrel. Like, what? The scribes and Pharisees, the, 
the lawyers, the the Sadducees, these are the guys that are like up there keeping the law, tithing off of their little, you know, mint or their cilantro, so to speak, if they're in New Mexico, right? They're doing perfect in the law. And Jesus is saying, you know, technically, these guys are at the lower end. They are not considered by God as significant. What? See, these guys are in the purple robes. They're walking through. They get the best seats in the synagogue. They're honored. They're called the, the lawyers or the teachers of Israel. They're the educators of Israel. They're close to God. I mean, uh, they, their whole life is spent doing that. I'm out fishing or in the garden or you know, whatever, and I'm stinky, and they're there praying and before God and reading His Word and, and copying it and and praising and teaching people. And, and Jesus says, no, actually they're at the bottom of the barrel because if they break one of the least of these commandments, which brings up an important note, right? So a side note, and I was asked about this this past Sunday about why would God be angry at some things, let some things pass when it seems like laws are being broken? It's because there, there are greater and lesser laws, according to Jesus. There's a hierarchical rule of laws, right? A hierarchy. Uh, you can have a greater law versus a lesser law. And when they come into conflict, you're always choosing the greater law over the lesser law. And he's saying, even if you have somebody with with a, a very small law of like washing your hands or whatever and they're breaking it and teaching men to do so then they're at the bottom of the barrel why because that's not where your righteousness comes from first of all right and that it's the wrong concept to have that you're acceptable to God if you can live by rules and and keep his law because you can, you can create a robot to do that, but that's not what God wants. And the idea here is that, um, well, Jesus gives the example when they come to him. And they're saying, your, your disciples are eating you know, on the Sabbath, and they're, they're eating when you're not supposed to be sowing or reaping or working. And he says, haven't you heard about David? And he came and he ate the showbread. When he and his men were starving, they're on the run. Uh, and the showbreads, that's unlawful for him to eat. Why didn't God just strike him down? Because a greater good is you're supposed to protect life, right? Thou shalt not kill, and if you have a chance to protect life, then you protect life over who eats this bread. This bread is more symbolic. It, it's, got, it, it's not useless. There's, there's a principle and a property in with the showbread but the law was made to create a relationship between God and man, not just follow rules. Because the rules are going to conflict, and then you've got this thing where you're just, you end up being just a lawbreaker because you can put rule against rule and just have all kinds of problems here. And so he's not going to accept their artificial righteousness. And why is it artificial? It's because these guys. They're spending their time going through the law. It's like our lawmakers and legislators in our state capital or in the country's capital, right? They'll interpret and write laws, but they always know the loopholes. And they may even write them so the loopholes are there. And where they're, they'll require this of the people, but they, they have their own system, right? Their own way of getting around those things. And... It just, it just ends up being ridiculous that they are seen as the pinnacle of piety when they're not. They're sinners as anyone else, but even worse because they should know better and they have the right and time and access to go through the law or make a perfect law, and yet they themselves violate it. That makes them bottom of the barrel. They're the least the less that's there. So 
Jesus says, but the one who teaches and keeps it, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right? Well, no one can, except for one. Jesus, right? He's the one, he's the only one who lived a sinful, perfect life. And he should be called great in the kingdom of heaven. He should be exalted. Even though he doesn't demand it, he should be exalted. He should be put on a pedestal. He should be, have the high place in, in the seating order, or pecking order, or whatever. But he didn't demand that. Matter of fact, he comes as the least, as the humble, as the second, as a servant. And, and it's just mind-blowing, right? Then he goes on to say, the third point in here, is that if, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the entire band, of the scribes and Pharisees, you're, there's no way you're getting into heaven. There's no way you can be saved. Ay, 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 ay. That had to be mind-blowing for people, right? Back in that day, whether they had that statement or not, man, you blew my mind, man, right? What? Then no one's getting into heaven because these guys were our standard. And he's like, these guys aren't your standard. They're not your standard because their righteousness is a self-righteousness. It's like a it's like an empty cup, but it's a bottomless cup. When you're pouring your own righteousness in, you're not adding anything good or new or of quality in. It's like if there's poison in that cup and you're just adding more, even if it's just, if you have a lot of poison or a little bit of poison, it's still tainted, right? It still falls short from purity and you'll never get there. And, and it's scary because... When he says this, you has to exceed their righteousness, he isn't talking about if you could just be a little bit better than Rabbi Shimei. If you could just, man, this one place, he doesn't keep the law. If you could do everything he does and just you exceed him by, by that much, you would make it in. It's not what he's saying. This exceeding means that it's overflowing. You have to exceed by a much higher standard than these guys are even doing. And that that's why it's mind-blowing at the time, because you're like, all right, I can't even come close to holding a candle to these guys. How am I supposed to exceedingly go beyond that? Like, these guys are running like four and a half minute miles. But Jesus says, you need to run a 90 second mile. Can't be done. Can't be done. That's the whole point. It, it, it can't be done. And the righteousness that you have to have has to be not just your own, it has to be overflowing. It has to be exceedingly beyond that. Well, who's the only one that has righteousness like that? God, right? He's infinite or unlimited in love and holiness. He exceedingly goes beyond them. And that's Jesus, right? Because he, he exceeds them. So yeah, he gets into heaven because he made heaven and earth, right? But here's the thing. You only get into a place that's that difficult to get into unless you have the key. It's not what or where, where is the key, or what is the key, it's who. And the who is Jesus, right? Jesus is the key who has exceedingly great righteousness. It's just overflowing. And he goes, hey, Scott, here's my righteousness. Hey, Mary, here's your righteousness. Hey, Kathy, here's your righteousness, right? And, and it's like, Oh, okay. I can receive that. If that's what you need me to do, I, can, I can't be better than those guys. No way. Let alone exceed that. But if, you're, if you got an abundance of it and you want to give some away, I'll take it. 
But look, he's the one who he teaches and he exceeds our righteousness and and he's called great in the kingdom of heaven, but he made himself the least, the the less, the servant, the sacrifice. The way he's able to extend that righteousness to me is that he sacrificed himself for the payment for all the things I did that were short-sighted or even in rebellious attitude, breaking the law, knowing it, going against God, becoming an enemy of God. And yet, <laughs> when he's teaching this, he's so humble, but it, it, there's so much nuances in here and oh man you know what he's just worthy of praise and we need to praise him amen and amen all right see you next week